Hello everybody! It's time for a weird video about top 10 lists. Where we make top 10 lists out of weird things. Today's top 10 is about the greatest or most infamous wonders of Tyria. Ranging from locales to concepts or even people. But why are we flying by this weird mystical toilet in Lion's Arch? Because inside weird things are stolen ideas and treasure. Let's begin. Number 10. If you've played Secrets of the Obscure, you know what this place is. It's the Wizard's Tower. For years, players have been speculating all sorts of things about the majestic floating tower. Originally, for Guild Wars 2, it hovered at a distance over at Kessex Hills, looming over the town of Garenhof. Before, it was just a set piece, teasing us, making us wonder, what is it? Why is it floating? Who's the master? Is Garin? What's he up to? What kind of books does he read? Does he poop? Where does all the poop in the tower go? So many mysteries, and most of them are finally revealed in the latest expansion, actually. Well, most of them, not the one about the poop. It's a very interesting and curious place once you're able to explore it. You'll find all sorts of weird knickknacks and doodads and it's some really weird SCP type stuff that are going on over there. The best way I can describe it is like the X-Files. If you're old enough to know what the X-Files are. Wait, what's the current generation thing going on? Uh, Twin Peaks, Twilight Peaks? I don't know, I'm not hip. Anyway, and that's why it sits at number 10 of Tyria's Wonders. Number nine, the waterfalls and ruins of the desert highlands. Holy moly, this place is a sight to behold. One of the most gorgeous set pieces in the game. You have a nice gigantic waterfall over here, and on top of that are mysterious ruins, housing a mini dungeon with puzzles and all sorts of stuff. An explorer's wet dream come true, with unforgettable vistas and a place to immerse yourself on your adventure. I am curious to know how this all got built anyway. Look at the architecture. Look at those giant pots. Was it all built by genie magic? Who the heck knows? But this is all really cool. And that's why it gets to be number nine. Because it's just, it's just cool. It's just really, really cool. Eight. Why only restrict Tyria's wonders to places? Let's have a look at Cantha's Jade Technology. I think many can agree that that alone is a marvel, especially in a setting such as Guild Wars 2. JTEC is a tremendous leap over what the rest of the world is capable of. The Asurans may not want to admit it, but I think they got beat. JTEC has introduced holograms, super robots, power reactors, high tech Sonic Adventure zip lines, robo arms and legs. I want a robo arm and leg. Televisions, microwaves, self serving noodle stands. Probably the best invention, honestly. I mean, look at that. I am getting hungry just looking at this. Oh, damn, I can eat some ramen. Anyway, the point is, Jade Technology has made lots of things possible. And now that Cantha has sort of loosened their borders a bit to the rest of the world, it's going to be really interesting how the rest of Tyria shapes up in this world of swords and sorcery. That's why it gets number eight. Seven. Snargle freaking Goldclaw. Yes, I am bringing in people into this top 10 list. Look, I said it would be weird. And what's weirder than Snargle Goldclaw? One would have to think hard on the answer. This char may very well be the most infamous char in all of existence. He may not be the most beloved, but you gotta respect this man's eagerness to shake the foundations of storytelling. In case you don't already know, this char writes SMUT, I mean literature, and pairs off fictional proxies of characters in Tyria. He calls them romance novels. But we all know he's actually the Guild Wars 2 manifestation of an AO3 fanfiction writer. Don't ask why I know AO3. Scattered around the world are his books thrown about. Some saucier than others. And if you collect them all, he writes a book about you, the commander. A fictional proxy, anyway. But you know, hey. <laughs> oh my. Some may cringe, some may smile, and some may actually get off on this, I don't know. But it's that infamous weirdness from Snargle that lands him number seven. You do you, pal. Oh yeah, baby. Six. Choco! 
We all appreciate Choco. Everyone knows who Choco is. Actually, uh, not sure if there is a Choco equivalent in the EU or any other region. But over here in NA, we got a band of char who just want to put a smile on people's faces by dance. You don't know when they'll appear. You don't know exactly where. But when they pop up on your screen, it's a pleasant surprise. Just the idea that there are players out there willing to goof around and become something of a positive presence is really special. You got Choco, you got the funny Choya players, the silly Quaggins, you know who I'm talking about. You know what, I guess Choco can share this number six spot with them all. Thank you players for being you. Five, Metal Legion. Guild Wars 2 has its own metal band. A shame they're only in Grothmar Valley. I would love to see these guys perform in other areas, or maybe during certain holiday events. But it's not just a badass band, it's the entire meta event that is incredibly amazing. You go and participate in mosh pits, you rile up the crowd, you dance, you mess around with stage equipment, you beat people up, it's utter chaos and sheer adrenaline. It's hard not to feel pumped up when playing this. Yeah, sure, their music might be a little on the char propaganda side, but it's metal as f And it's the kind of badass, adrenaline-inducing, testosterone-fueled fun that I appreciate. We need more of this, ArenaNet. Thanks to Ruin Bria for bringing us out! Be proud. Char forever. Four. Time to be a little more serious again. Tarir. The Forgotten City. Guild Wars 2's version of El Dorado. An incredibly beautiful place in the middle of the Maguma jungle, hidden away until it was needed to combat the Elder Dragon Morgamoth, and the birthplace of our favorite baby girl, Arreen. Tarir is the centerpiece of a major point in the story, but it's also legitimately a wonder on its own. This place was a pleasure to explore, where there is danger at every corner outside and the fear of getting lost in the entangled depths of the jungle. There is a serene sanctuary, with a look of pristine glory that invokes a sense of adventure. And it has weird floaty dudes. Look at them. They're so weird. <gasps> oh, and a water slide! Whee! Three. Time to be weird again. Queen Jenna's feet. Logan Thackeray must be sweating right now at the mention of this. Jenna's feet is a meme. It's simultaneously an ongoing community joke and a canonical thing. The queen doesn't wear shoes. But why? Some people say because she's a mesmer, she simply puts on the illusion of being shoeless. But if that's the case, then why bother? And if it's not the case, is it a fashion statement? A political statement? Is it out of pure laziness? Is it to spite the other opposing nobility? Is it to string along Logan Thackeray by teasing him in his foot fetish? Oh, wow. That's gotta be canon, right? This whole thing bewilders me to this day, and that's why it deserves to be number three. Two, buckle up. It's about to get weirder. We all know how completely messed up and vile Palawa Joko is, right? And how self-indulgent he was? Then it should be no surprise that he has a harem waiting for him in the desolation. If you complete a series of small events in the map, you gain access to this little area hidden away. And here, we witness a den of iniquity. Joko has kept a harem of various women, servants that cater to his every whim. But this hidey hole of depravity isn't what makes this one of the top infamous wonders of Tyria. It's the fact that Palawa Joko is banging this Choya. Hey yo, what the f That's like putting your pee-pee in a cactus. Oh no. Huh? And Palawa Joko is weird, man. One. This one is a fairly major spoiler to the end of End of Dragons. If you have not done the finale or the meta event of the last map and wish to not be spoiled, then this is the end of the video for you. No way to avoid talking about it otherwise. I hope you get to that point of the story yourself because it is the best wonder in the game to experience so far. All right then, I've given fair warning. Number one is Dragon's End. There is a lot to say here, but I will try to keep it succinct. The Jade Sea, which Dragon's End is located in, is a huge map with a vast, frozen, solid jade ocean. 
The Canthans have been farming this area for their energy source that powers their J technology. This map is also a huge pivotal moment in the game's story. The epic conclusion to the Elder Dragon Saga. Damn, it is epic! The map is designed to be played normally, but at the same time, it is also designed like an open-world 60-man raid. This is the best way to describe it to any other non-Guild Wars 2 player. The final battle utilizes the entire zone and progresses throughout, leading to a spectacle of a fight against a giant emo snake. The reason why this definitely earns the top spot is the sheer amount of wonder drawn from this map and battle, the special effects, the main characters and their heroic banter, all the players fighting alongside you, the incredible music that instills hope and glory, all of that and more factors into a truly unforgettable, awe-inspiring experience. And it will be extremely difficult to top this for Guild Wars 2. This is, this is top 10. <laughs> I made it funny. And there you have it. A kind of half serious, kind of weird top 10 list of wonders. Honestly, half of this I just felt like memeing. And the other half I felt like gushing over things. You may ask. Hey Vanilla Bean, did this really need it to be formatted as a top 10 list? To which I answer... Uh... Uh, April Fools. I got him. Uh, I just wanted to. I, don't know, I just want to make a low effort video. That's all. I don't know if I'll do another one of these. It was just a spur of the moment type of thing. But I like to make let's play type of stuff on the channel with MMOs and anime games. If that's your jam, consider liking, subscribing, yada yada yada, YouTuber things. Also, I stream on Twitch. Links in the description. Anyway. And as always, take care of yourselves, stay safe and be kind to each other. I'll catch y'all later.